Welcome to the Healthy Screen Habits Podcast. I'm Hillary Wilkinson. Whether you're starting your parenting journey with a newborn or looking to connect with your teen on technology, let's learn some new healthy screen habits together. I'm so excited to introduce today's guest. As a licensed marriage and family therapist, parenting coach, and nationally recognized parenting expert, Betty Alkazian works with families to ease challenges and increase joys of raising children. Her latest work in progress is a book on anxiety, and that topic is what we are going to discuss today. I'm so grateful to have you as a guest and dive dive into this topic of anxiety, which seems to affect us all in one way or another at some point in our lives. Welcome, Betty Alkazian. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. Talking about your your uh, newest topic of interest. Well, it didn't happen, you know, just randomly. It was because it was what comes through my door every single day, not to mention what happens in my house all day, every day. <laughs> Right. So it's interesting you talk about it coming through your door every day because from the untrained eye, which would be mine, (laughs) it seems as though we are kind of having this moment of like almost like a twin pandemic, not just with COVID-19, but also with this term that we hear again and again, which is anxiety. And I think that whenever we're approaching a term or a topic that gets used a lot, a great place to start is simply with the definition. So that being said, can you kind of start us there? Like what is anxiety and why do we need to pay attention to it? Great question. It's an emotion. It is a feeling. It is a an autonomic nervous system response that is natural, that is built into our bodies. Okay. Can, it. You, can you back us up just a little bit and remind us what the autonomic nervous system is? The autonomic nervous system is run by our reptilian brain, and it's the automatic stuff that we don't have to think about our heartbeat, our blood pressure, our respiration, all the things that our body does naturally without us having to intentionally think about it. it we're, it's built into our system to save ourselves, right? If we're, you're being chased, then you need to run and save yourself. And if, you know, if there's danger, then we get into fight or flight response or uh, freeze or faint response for some people. But all of those things are good, healthy ways that we survive terrifying or dangerous situations. So some people are hardwired to actually think that they're in danger when they are not. And that is the epidemic that I think you're talking about. Those of us who experience anxiety, it is hereditary. So it's very unlikely to happen in a vacuum, but it also can happen as a result of trauma, as a result of experience in life that then makes us afraid of experiencing that thing again. Because we feel like we're in a place that's endangering our lives actually exactly. it's it hits that same spot exactly and our internal instinct is to survive sure and it kind of makes sense that as the human species moves along that we're becoming more and more anxious because it was only those people that were anxious enough to recognize something strange here, I need to get out of here and survive. And then those people, then you talk about it having this genetic component. I've never thought about that. (laughs) For sure. Oh my gosh. And I always, when I'm doing an intake with the family and I'm hearing about an anxious child, I'm like, okay, which one of the parents is anxious? (laughs) Oh, funny. Often it's both. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that is interesting. I wasn't aware of this strong genetic component to it. For sure. So as with anything in parenting, it seems like the first step in successfully managing this parenting relationship starts with really taking a deep dive into yourself. 
Absolutely. Uh, to me, that is the place to start and to model for our kids. So we are about to head into our first school year following a full year of pandemic. And at homeschooling and many families are experiencing anxiety about returning to school in person and i'm getting a lot of questions about this at healthy screen habits so this is what i want to talk about next but first we need to take a short break do you live with a teen who is tech savvy maybe a digital native who's the only one who can figure out how to get the playlist going in the car each tuesday on the healthy screen habits instagram and facebook pages we spotlight teen tip tuesday these are features submitted by teens that provide helpful hacks for productivity managing social media and promoting intentional tech use if you know a teen who has a helpful screen tip we want to hear from them have them contact us at healthyscreenhabits.org and put teen tip in the subject line. I'm speaking with Betty Alkazian, LMFT and parenting coach, as well as the mom of three amazing daughters and a wife of 36 years to her husband, Jeff. I mentioned that because I love, Betty, how you bring such... Uh, relatability on how you talk about things like relationship and anxiety and parenting concerns. But you just come from this very real boots on the ground type approach. During the pandemic, we were all reliant on our online lifelines through school and work, etc., which has its own points of concern. But um, now our kids are headed back to school and as i talked about before the break i'm hearing many parents voicing concern about their own as well as their child's level of anxiety in going back to school in person on campus so i'm looking and i i am i you know when i say i'm hearing parents believe me i'm in that line okay <laughs> so I do not get a hall pass. And I'm just wondering, I'm th this is my way of asking, do you have any advice to give a parent who's anxious or whose child is anxious about returning to school? Absolutely. I, I'm hearing this too. So uh, you're not alone. And uh, I think, first of all, it's really important to understand what we've been through, right? This whole pandemic, this year and a half, uh, that we have just been through and it's not over, you know, as the, the news changes every day and as the uptick in cases happens, there is an uptick in anxiety in, right. at least that I'm hearing. Right. Cause it feels familiar now. And we're like, right. Oh no, not again, not again, not again. That's exactly right. We're like, Oh, talk about anxiety, right? It's that trauma response. Mm. Of, oh no, don't make us go back to where we were. That was terrible. Right. And so people are having that. No, 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 don't let that happen feeling. And so, um, so we have to remember to look at it in the big picture. It's not just about today. It's not just about going back to school. It's about what kids have been through. Of course, what we've been through. But I, I say kids in particular because kids have developing brains, right? We're, we're, our brains are already hardened. And <laughs> I mean, not that we can't change them, but what we call the neuroplasticity of a developing brain and especially teens i've got to you know mention that in particular the teen brain is especially vulnerable because it is developing rapidly we call teens super learners because their brains are just absorbing at unbelievable speeds and we've taken them out of their typical learning environment for, for some kids, for those who were out of school literally for a year, over a year, um, I'm very concerned about developmentally what they didn't get and the, what the long-term effects of that will be. And when you're talking developmentally, you're not focused on the academics. You're talking about like social benchmark type developments, right? Yes. Child okay. development, what we need, that the 
all the brain synapse connections that we expect to happen because of all the things that were built into life before. Uh -huh. And we knew that that worked because we would measure those benchmarks of development. And we don't have any idea what the long-term effects are going to be of taking away all those built-ins that were helping our kids' brains develop properly and appropriately and on time and all of that stuff that we would expect in child development. So keep that in mind when you're considering how to help your child and yourself launch into this new school year. So when I say that, I mean, have patience, have compassion for what they've been through. They have been through a trauma. We have been through a trauma. There have also been some beautiful silver linings that are, you know, perhaps will compensate for some of the losses. And so that's a good thing too. Um, not all kids were in a great situation during this year and they may have had greater trauma. When we talk about trauma, we talk about little T trauma and big T trauma. So for most of us, this pandemic was probably a little T trauma because most of us were safe and we still had our homes and we still had food on the table and we still had all the things that kept us alive and safe. But for some, uh, for some kids, it was more of a big T trauma because perhaps they were home in um, unsafe surroundings full time and didn't have that escape and safety of school. So be patient with your kids. Know that also there are different kinds of kids. We have introverted kids who stinking loved this pandemic because they didn't have to deal with the social anxiety of being at school and a lot of the complexity that makes being at school hard for some kids. Right. Navigating <laughs> relationships and exactly. dealing with different, you know, managerial styles of teachers face to face. Exactly. And, you know, and the social hierarchies, right? They could tune out, they could go off of social media if they wanted to and just be like, I'm home, I'm good. But there were lots of kids who are not that way and were starved and became quite anxious and depressed, not getting those needs met. And some of the introvert kids also didn't get those needs met. Um, so have patience and know that they will adapt. Kids are also resilient. Kids are also um, quick to adapt typically. If they're not adapting quickly, then it might be something that needs to be looked at and evaluated. But I think what you'll find is once kids are back in school and they're having a normal school year for the most part, hopefully, then um, I think things will smooth out. Okay. So do you have any recommendations for like, I, I know people who say like in, you know, spring semester of last year, they got to school and the child would not get out of the car. Like you said, this anxiety, they're afraid for their life. And everything on the news is telling them, yes, you need to be afraid for your life. And, yes. and I mean, we all need to be very aware of what is happening right now. So I'm just wondering if you have any, like, do you recommend like scaffolding this school approach? I totally understand and want to approach everything with the compassion based style that you're talking about. I'm just wondering, sometimes when I'm in that very stressful moment, it helps me if I have like a script to work off of. Do you have any, any words you could help feed those of us who may be feeling kind of tongue tied in the moment? Uh, 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 <laughs> how, how do I say this? I think it's really important to be aware for you and perhaps other parents who are looking not only for a script or something to do, that that may be your anxiety speaking sure. about, right? Because when we're anxious, the more we can control a situation, the better we feel about it. Oh, totally. And so, <laughs> so the better you can control your anxiety, and sorry, I didn't mean to like call you out <laughs> on okay. your own podcast. 
<laughs> but the more parents can be aware of how their anxiety is affecting them they and and control it the best possible way then the better they're going to be able to help their kids manage their anxiety because if you're anxious and out of control and like okay we need to go do this come on let's go to school and we're going to walk through your classes and we're going to do this and that's to alleviate your anxiety that may not at all be totally. What your child you're needs. you're absolutely right. Yeah, right? it's gonna and, and so, they're gonna vibe it. They're gonna translate <laughs> it. No, yeah, you're right. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so if you can own your piece and say, "Look, I'm feeling kind of anxious about the beginning of school, and I'm thinking that I feel like I want to do this." Does oh, that that's like that great. Would be helpful for you. Okay. And See, that's, just own that's yours. I mean. Okay. <laughs> okay. Own your part and ask, how can I be of best support to you, to your child? It, they may need something very different from you. And then if you aren't getting the things that you need, then what do you need to do to manage your anxiety, right? If you need to go for a walk, you need to go for a run, you need to get to, to the gym, you need to meditate, uh, you know, sit with a box of rocks on your lap to ground yourself, whatever that looks like for you, so that you can be present and have your higher order thinking online, right? The more anxious we are, we lose that higher order thinking. So if you can keep your anxiety at a manageable level, then you're going to be able to be present for your child and to say, you seem anxious. How can I support you right now? Okay. But when I'm feeling I anxious, I need to say, I'm feeling anxious about this. This is, this will help me if we do that. Okay. <laughs> Very good points. Thank you. <laughs> okay. It's hard to now, hear. It's hard. Oh, no. <laughs> but, but speaking like as uh, trying to get ourselves grounded in ourselves, you know, in, in the correct headspace, a big concern that I know is people are having difficulty finding therapists or counselors who even have, I mean, so many people are trying to seek help do you have tips on how to how to get access to a therapist? Are there websites you recommend or apps or anything that we could help our audience with? Yes. Um, and I do beg for people's perseverance because it is very hard. I, it is frustrating for me to to tell people I have no space in my practice right now. And then I refer to my friends and they say they have no space in their practice. And that is hard and frustrating. And then people come back to me and say, your friends didn't have any space either. What do I do? I refer people to psychologytoday.com. Okay. And I'll link that in the show notes. They if you click on therapists or find a therapist, something like that, you can look by zip code. You can look by area of specialization, but it may take several phone calls. So don't give up. Right, right. And I know that's sometimes the hardest thing is that perseverance when you're feeling pushed to a point of, I need help. So thank you for that tip, psychology.com. Psychologytoday.com. Yes. Psychologytoday.com. <laughs> yeah, it's a magazine, Psychology Today, okay. that is... Um, it, it's their website. There are some great articles on there. I'm sure there are some great articles about helping kids through the pandemic and things like that. It's a great resource, actually. Okay, super. So that kind of brings us around to getting more back on the screen side of things. I'm just wondering, in your practice and the hundreds of families that you've engaged with, have you seen a correlation between excessive screen time use and anxiety? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> 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 if anybody says no, I, I have very big question marks for them. Um, so I'm not 100% sure why, to be perfectly honest. Mm. I mean, there are, I, I'm sure you could answer some of these questions better than I, but what I see is lots of anxiety when kids are asked to turn off. If they're video gaming, um, there is this, uh, 
uh, need, push, motivation to reach next levels, to not let down their team if they're gaming online with other friends or other people. Um, so there is this tremendous anxiety and that's built into the game, right? To keep people coming back. And we do have to educate our kids about how the psychology behind game development. We also have to um, thinking about like social media for our teens and young teens. They really need to be watching. We need, we as parents need to be watching what our kids are exposed to, what they're seeing. They are seeing a very skewed view of the world, but it can cause tremendous anxiety to feel as though they weren't included in something if they see their friends on social media or they're not good enough, thin enough, pretty enough, uh, enough in any way because they're comparing themselves to a false image. And we mm. have to educate our kids about those false images. And um, I often tell parents the story of the boy I liked in high school and how I defined myself by the fact that he didn't like me back. And so I decided I just wasn't those one of those likable girls. And 35 years later, fast forward, he friended me on Facebook and I messaged him and you know, first I totally stalked him because I could. <laughs> and, and, you know, I wasn't looking to start anything, I promise. But I just messaged him and said, hey, thanks for friending me. You have a beautiful family. I had such a crush on you in high school. And he said, I know I had a crush on you too, but girls scared me. I just wanted to play basketball. Oh, and, and here I, you're you're like identification of self. Uh, that's right. And been... this is what our teens do. I actually I thought about it for two days and I wrote him back and I said, thank you. I work with families with teens and I defined myself based on what I thought you thought of me. And by you telling me that today helps me teach families to educate their kids that what they think they're reading in their friends' eyes, messages, texts, you know, all the subtext assumptions that are being made um, are wrong. They are wrong. <laughs> and that's why we need to keep our kids turned toward their families and to understand that developmentally they turn toward their friends for feedback and for values and for all sorts of things. So we need to keep them in the fold enough that they're also getting values and feedback from us. Mm, very good. Yeah. Maintaining some screen free times too, so yes. that we just circle, circle the wagons back around the family touch point with our values touch point with what's important to to our family. Yes. So especially yet younger brains, even preteen, those kids are unable to regulate themselves on screens. They would be on for eight hours a day or 10 hours a day if we let them. Mm -hmm. And so we have to teach them moderation and balance, right? Oh, you've been on screens for half an hour. I think that's enough time. Let's give your brain and your eyes and your body a break. Let's go do something where we're moving our bodies and active and okay, we've been outside, we've been playing and active. Then okay, sit down and have some quiet time on your screen for a little bit. It's a balancing thing because we want to cr our kids to crave balance in Great. life so that Great. their brain isn't constantly seeking those, uh, you know, chemicals and, you know, endorphins or serotonin or whatever it is that's being released in their brain. We don't want them to crave that all the time. We want them to crave balance. So we have right. to teach them the habit of balance. And I love that work in because your, um, your organization is actually called balanced parenting. And now it's <laughs> all coming clear to me. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a short break. And when I come back, I'm going to ask Betty for her healthy screen habit. Are you looking to get your child a phone but don't know where to start? Good news. Healthy Screen Habits has done the legwork for you, and our answer is Gab Wireless. Gab Wireless created the phone that parents have all been asking for. 
It can text, but doesn't receive or send pictures. It looks like a smartphone with a touch screen, has talk, text, calculator, calendar, FM radio, and alarm functions, but no internet. Setup is super easy. Plug it in and start charging. Activation is free, shipping is free, and the best news is that Gab wireless phones start at under $100. Now, even more good news. You can get $5 off your order of a Gab wireless phone by using the promo code HS Habits. That's HS Habits, like healthy screen habits, but shorter. You can find a link to Gab Wireless under the Tools tab on our website at www.healthyscreenhabits.org. Press and hold the tab menu and look under products we endorse in the drop down menu. We are back. I'm talking with Betty Alkazian, a parenting expert who's helping parents to grow their child's coping skills, raise children with values, and be as healthy as possible, which is why I'm going to ask her now for a healthy screen habit, which is a tip or takeaway that our listeners can put into practice in their own home. So we just touched a lot on balance, and that was Excellent. Do you have any other tips for us? I feel like this whole episode could be one giant tip, but do you have do you have one for us? Well, my favorite parenting tool is compassion. I tell parents all the time, if you don't know what to do in any moment, just go straight to a place of compassion and know that whatever your child is struggling with is difficult. So when you are asking them to have that balance and to go off their screens and to take a break from social media and to get to not talk to their friends and to come engage with actual human three dimensional people, um, that that is hard for them. There is an anxiety about um, leaving the quad, so to speak, right, and that, not knowing what their friends are saying and doing when they're not watching. Right. That fear of missing out. The fear of missing out. Believe me, I I have that too. So I get it. So when we can have compassion for what our kids are going through and help them to feel safe, seen, and soothed, which are the three S's for a secure attachment in attachment theory, um, and they know that we get it. Like they just need to know, I see you. I know it's really hard to pull yourself away and it's hard for you to know the impact of what these screens are doing to your brain and your nervous system and your body. So you need parents to help you find that balance and have compassion for when you say no or you say stop and how hard that is for them and let them know that you get it. It's a beautiful way to connect, but um, just come from that place of understanding and like you, your word compassion of understanding how difficult the, the screens are. Because like you said, the, due to the persuasive design, they are not meant to be turned off. They are not designed to be something you want to put down so it's very exactly and very you different. you using the word connection is the most important piece thank you for saying that because our kids just need to feel connected to us and th they're much more likely to hear us and to be open to us saying okay enough let, let's do something different now if they're feeling connected to us so right right beautiful thank you so oh no thank you so betty if people would like to learn more about balanced parenting and, and you <laughs> what's the best place for them to look uh, i have a website balancedparenting.com i also have a page on facebook called balanced parenting and i'm on instagram betty b-e-t-t-e -E, dot parenting dot guru which i don't call myself a guru don't want you to think that <laughs> that i named myself that somebody else named that but um i would second it, it for up. the record but <laughs> thank you and anxious parenting is also my account on instagram okay well wonderful thank you so much for being here thank you for inviting me so good to see you for more information, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Healthy Screen Habits. 
make sure to visit our website, healthyscreenhabits.org, where you can subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts or via RSS, so you'll never miss an episode. It's free, it's fun, and you get a healthy new screen habit each week. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate you giving us a quick rating. It really does help other people find us and spread the word of healthy screen habits. Or if you'd simply like to tell a friend, we'd love that too. I so appreciate you spending your time with me this week, and I look forward to learning more healthy habits together.